Welcome to the Poisoner's Cabinet. I'm Sinead. And I'm Nick. And this is your weekly podcast exploring the lives of the great poisoners, macabre murders and captivating crimes from across the centuries and creating curious cocktails inspired by the tales that we tell. And it's episode 157. Hurrah! Hurrah! Hurrah indeed. Yes, it is. Yes. We shall tell all of the cotillion <laughs> of our many, many podcast of episodes. Of our many episodes, absolutely. I mean, we joke. That's what we do at every event. That's oh, what absolutely. I do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've got it on business cards. <laughs> I have to get a new business card every week. It's really annoying. Yes, yes. But enough about my podcast. I'm so sorry for your funeral. <laughs> Why would I be saying that to the corpse, by the way, as well? <laughs> Just leave it with a stack, <laughs> stack of business cards in the, in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to hell, tell the devil I said hello. Well, I can leave that at funeral parlours, churches. <laughs> bar mitzvahs. <laughs> bar mitzvahs, absolutely, yeah. And we got a board at wedding. Oh, I'll pick up this flyer. Oh, a nice podcast. I mean, that actually makes sense. You get bored at weddings. Absolutely. There's a lot of speeches. Listen to some nice podcasts on the side. Yes, and then you'll laugh along in a in, in an in honest really way inappropriate but different timing sort of way <laughs> <laughs> someone's talking about their dead grandmother yeah. <laughs> and someone left all these podcast cards at her funeral ha so I thought new advertising stream I feel it's a strange aside actually I've got we've I've got to do networking tomorrow mm-hmm. and my husband's coming with because it's free wine and I said do you want to come with and I said do I have to teach you how to network because his idea of networking is just going hello to people <laughs> hello cricket <laughs> cricket cricket or he just kept coming up with terrible chat up lines and I'm like you're not going there to score <laughs> a I'm with you and he's like no I know I'm joking is like, isn't that what you do like, no you don't just go up to them going hey they're beautiful it's just a series of Simpsons lines so yeah. um, it should be fun that's, tomorrow. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> I might turn up and just watch. How are you, Nick? Um, I think I'm all right. You all right? You all right? Yeah, you're, you're, you're pretty much back to normal health? I think so. Yeah, still coffee. Still a bit coffee. Still coffee. Still got yeah. a tickly throat, which is very annoying. It won't no. go away. Oh, no. Especially in the evening. In the evening? Yeah. I lie in bed, coughing away. But during the day, it doesn't bother me. That's because you're lying down, surely. In the, of an evening. It's like, oh. I'm going to get you. <laughs> so what the germs are doing. That's what doing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's annoying. You're milking it a bit now, though, aren't you? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I've got to make the most of it. No one cares otherwise. Uh, oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Uh, woe is me. Yeah, snap out of it. I'm going to go into Irish mammy mode in a bit. I've been kind to you. I've tended to you. I've been really nice. But a bit of my mother's going to come out in a minute going, you know what will make you better? Make me a cup of tea. And clean your room. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, I'm fighting fit. And, and live with the darkness inside mm, me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, any poisonings this week? Um, well, possibly one. Okay. Possibly. Because I've made an offer on the house. <gasps> and they haven't responded to me yet. So I think the only possible reason why they haven't responded is because they're dead. <laughs> why else would they be holding out? It has been a day. Nick. Yeah, I know. I'm really impatient. <laughs> he has been in a mood since he has put the offer in. Sort of stomping around like, not just like, oh, I'm in... Stomping around. A bit, a bit. It's like it's a personal slight against you. Of course they're going to wait. Going to make you wait. Yeah, bastards. <laughs> Well, I'm going to kill them then. Do you feel like someone's poisoned them or they have poisoned themselves rather than respond to your offer? Yeah, well, it could be either. It could be either, really. <laughs> it was so insulting yeah. that they killed them. It's a sort of spiteful thing I would do, probably. <laughs> it's the only possible explanation. <laughs> we, we gave them your offer and they died. <laughs> how these things work fair enough okay well uh we'll see how that yeah, works out so that's exactly what's going on but you know what we've all got our fingers and toes crossed for you nick all the podcast community all of you listeners <laughs> wish nick luck think think positive thoughts manifest this for nick yes don't manifest your own stuff <laughs> no it's all about it's all about oh god <laughs> <laughs> the germs are back <laughs> You're just creating this Victorian melodrama. <laughs> Why don't you do this in the estate agent? <laughs> My consumption grows ever worse. I require a dry house. <laughs> I need somewhere lovely to go and die. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I want this to work out for you now. I'm, I'm... Somewhere for my final days. <laughs> fainting couch. That's all, that's all there is. That's the only furniture is in there. That's your, Just... mo- that's your moving in gift. There's <laughs> a fainting couch and a bag of Revels. <laughs> Excellent. You love Rebels. Sounds grand. Wonderful. Well, um, speaking of uh, over dramatizing moving day and. <laughs> over dramatizing indeed. And uh, Rebels, I think it is time for us to thank our delicious Patreon subscribers. That we should. We've had many people coming and going all over the place, and people have joined us who have come back to us. Yes. Come back to us and come back. And so thank you very much. And lots of upgrades as well. So indeed. So thank you very much. If you are a Patreon, you're a bloody marvel. You are a wonder. We love you very much. A whole bunch of people have just got their new cyanide connoisseur sores packs Ooh, so yeah. stickers and fridge magnets and little recipes and little gifts for them have arrived in the post 
Uh, it took long enough. Royal Mail really did a number on me there yep. with one of our lovely, lovely, gorgeous Patreons just like was checking in with them going, had they arrived? Had they arrived? Uh, no. I'm like, I swear to God, I sent them two weeks ago. I have the receipts. We've got to get halfway across the world. They do. Yes. Yes. Australia uh, in six months. Yeah. Somehow you'll get yeah, something. Maybe something. That's a point. <laughs> Thank you. You're all a wonder. And it's a lovely place over in Patreon. We had fun. We spoke of a murderous, uh, a milkman murder. Oh, milkman. Yes. Death by milkman. Death by milkman. Uh... Death by milk and uh, scandalous milkman as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was at the end. It was. It was a good short story of scandal. Yeah. Packed a lot in. Yeah, we made and we made a lot of shit up. <laughs> we did actually. Well, we made a lot of theories up actually. Yeah, yeah. We solved that case. Yeah, yeah, and many others. I feel it's a wonderful place, Patreon. If you would like to know more, you can always message us or head over to patreon.com forward slash the poisonous cabinet. Look at the various tiers. Have a little dip your toe in. There are many, many episodes and fun things to find many. on there. Many, many, many episodes. <laughs> well, Nick, are you ready? Uh, okay. To drink cocktails and talk about poison. What is you and your strange voices? Or it's very unnerving. Could drink some poison and talk about the cocktails. Let's talk about some cocktails. Are oh, you talking about cocktails? Talk about cocktails. All right. Well, it seems like you have a ready supply of poison. Yeah, absolutely. You've got a whole thing going Way on. Way ahead. Okay. Well, we'll we'll get to that. You start. We'll get to that. Okay. And you show me how it's done, and then I will follow. <laughs> But for now, let, let's have a cocktail okay. while we ponder the poison option. Hooray! Well, Fine. it is Nick's story this week, and we can't, we, can't, we can't possibly have a story without a cocktail in hand. As you know, dear listeners, every week we choose a secret ingredient that is inspired by the tale that we tell, and it will flavour our cocktail of the week. Nick's story, so his pick, and this week's secret ingredient is... It's a lovely oak tree. An oak tree! Yes. An oak tree. An oak tree, An you oak say? tree. Or oh, an old British oak. No, not one of those. No, not? A no. Different, a oh, different one. an American oak? Who knows? A, a Belgian oak. A Belgian, the classic Belgian <laughs> oaks. Belgian oak. Let's go with oak. Mm. I like it. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I dread to ask, are we having an oaked Chardonnay? Oh, I didn't think of that. That'd be good. I, don't, I like it. I don't mind a Chardonnay. I don't mind a Chardonnay. Fair off with your oak stuff, though. Yeah. Oh, that was a big thing in the 90s. Do you remember that? Yeah, Chardonnay was a big thing in the 90s. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bridget Jones's diary and everything. And Chardonnay, give Chardonnay another go, people. But but other than that, well, we'll just get some wine. And we'll just get some wine. <laughs> we'll just get some Pinot Gris and be done with it. put ah, some fine. Elm in it. It'll be lovely. <laughs> we'll make our own wine. But uh, so to accompany our homemade wine, what are we having? We are having yes. a lone oak. Okay. Ooh, mm. Ooh that sounds spooky. Spooky. Lone spooky, lonely. Oak. On, the, uh, on a hill. Well, they often are. More quiet. Why? Because they're quite big, I suppose. Take a lot yeah. of space. A lot of, a lot of nutrients. They're not like competition, I would imagine. You get a ring of oaks, so you get them all in a line on a hill. That's where someone's planted them. What happened to the lone oak? It walked there. Yes. It's actually an end. <laughs> well, maybe that's it. They're just moving very slowly. They're like, oh, fuck, someone's looking. Lovely. I like it. A lone oak. A lone oak. oak. Sounds elegant. Sounds fancy. I think it is high time for us to skip into the poisonous cabinet kitchen and shake up a storm. So we'll see you in a minute. We'll see you in a bit. And we're back. Hello. So, Nick, we have a lone oak. A lone oak. It looks creamy. Yeah. Well, not creamy, but yellowy yeah, it's, and it's thick. Yeah, curious. Oh. It's, not, well, it's, not, it's not our usual brown. Well, when you say curious, I'm worried that you thought it was going to be brown and this happened. I didn't think it was going to be brown. <laughs> no. I didn't expect... I don't know what I expected to be I honest. mean, it's a custard colour, really. Yeah. And, and and appears to be that sort of consistency. But we won't know. I, I tell you now, there's no custard involved. Aww. Which is disappointing now you've mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, I don't mind a cup of custard yeah. every now and then. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. it looks... I don't know what makes it oaky, but maybe we'll find out. Well, yeah, it looks indeed. like a yellow oak Chardonnay, doesn't it? <laughs> mm, no. No. A bad one. <laughs> a very, very bad All one. All right. Well, let's dive in. Smell. Yeah. Smell. Ooh, it smells of things. Oh, things. God, your palate has improved markedly over four years. I, mm. I think we must dive in. Give it a go. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, well, 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 well. Whoa. I can see through time. Oh, that's deeply unpleasant. <laughs> Oh, good lord, Nick. No, no, none that's of that. That's just an entire lemon. That's, that's, no, no. Uh, um, no, I don't like that. What did you do? <laughs> it's so lemony. It's like it's drinking. a lot of lemon going on. I'm just, I'm just going to look at the recipe. Can you double check the recipe? Because uh, that, that ain't right. That ain't right. That I have uh, put the appropriate amount of lemon juice called for by 
the recipe? I have a second, second sip. I, 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 I'm shudder too because I don't know if I'll get the use of my lips back. It's easier on the second sip. Ish. Well, he says your palate's slightly used to it. By the yeah, because your palate's been shot to pieces. Um, it's still a bit weird though. No, I'm not a fan of that. I'm, I, my face is sort of <laughs> crunched in on itself. <laughs> it's that line from Succession. If I cringe anymore, I'll become a fossil. <laughs> so well, apart, apart from lemon, give me a guess. I don't know. It's not very pleasant. Load of lemon, like so sharp. Then a little dance of flavour. Something herbal, maybe? And it then it just absolutely something. falls off a cliff. To, to Like like you were drinking lemony water suddenly. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. It's just a bad cocktail. It's just not very nice. It's not as bad as like the, the Golden Cadillac. It's not bad as it's... some, but it's just... Oh dear, no. what a waste of liquor. Well, talk us through this monstrosity, Nick. Okay, well, yes, there is lemon juice. Shocking, shocking. Yeah. How much? Two thirds of an ounce. That's not a lot. No. At all. But it obviously comes across very, very strongly. Whiskey. Irish whiskey. Oh, Jesus, really? Yep. A dash of chartreuse. I mean, <laughs> you're talking a sixth of an ounce. So a tiny, yeah. tiny amount. The weird the, the weird thing, which I am, I, I can smell. I can't taste it, but I can smell it. And I think it's giving it this consistency and this look. Custard. The pistachio. No. Yeah. Why did you do this to the to the to the lovely pistachio? <laughs> now the recipe does call for a pistachio pistachio syrup, which I don't have. I've got the pistachio liqueur. Oh. So I don't know. I have a Is feeling like potentially a sugar syrup? The, the syrup might be a lot sweeter, counterbalancing the lemon. Do you think um, this would work if we put sugar syrup? So potentially, in? half tempted to grab some of the sugar. Should we do a live mm. mix yeah, up? Go okay, for hang it. on. Right, live people. Right, what am I getting? Am I getting the agave or the or this one or what? What am I? Doing? Talk me through it, Nick. Yeah, we're having fun there. I don't know, I'm panicking, Nick, I'm panicking. I'm going to say a drop of the honey syrup Ooh. might <laughs> do something. You get rid of it. Can you check us a spoon as well? Uh, yes. No. Right in front of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I get so nervous when I'm near the cabinet when I'm live, because I just... The intrusive thoughts are just smash everything. And there the podcast ended. <laughs> That's it. It's just, it's this overwhelming <laughs> fear that I'm going to break stuff and there's a voice in my head going, do it, do it. What no. do you reckon then? Give it a wee splash. Okay, well, we're just pouring some honey syrup in. You say when. Step. Handing the bottle over to Nick. I will take the giant spoon, the ceremonial spoon. Give it's it a... quite thick, yeah. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's going to need a... Stirry, stirry, stirry. <laughs> It's a big spoon and very it's small glass. Spoon, yeah. I mean, there may be no saving this. Right. We've added the honey syrup. Added a dash of the honey. Let's let's see if that makes any mm. improvement. Ah. Yes. It needed that. It needs that sweetness. Obviously, you, you obviously must get that with the pistachio syrup. Definitely different. So. It's still not great. It's still not great. It's still, it's not, still great. not great. It's it's drinkable now. Yeah. Would you think that was drinkable now? I, 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 I'll probably polish it off. Yeah. <laughs> Just because it's, it's here. Yeah, and you don't um, want to waste it because yeah. that was some good stuff in there as well. So the honey syrup obviously takes the edge off the, the yeah. lemon. Fairness to the recipe, it does require pistachio syrup. I, did, I tried to substitute and obviously it didn't work. It, it's still only okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's drinkable now. It's still the same thing. Lemon. The fact that chartreuse <laughs> is in there is lost on me. Completely, because... completely. Gone. The fact that there's whiskey in there is completely the lost whiskey, on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and then it just completely falls off a cliff yeah. because yeah. you kind of get, it's like you've lumbered up and you've got lemon, lemon, lemon. Oh, and something else. Oh, no, 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 nothing. Well, okay. Well, boo. Well, the lone oak is alone for a reason. Yes, yeah, quite. It knows what it's done. <laughs> And it, and it will stay on that hill <laughs> until it learns. For emergency use only. <laughs> Is it time for a story, it Nick? It certainly should be. Hooray! <laughs> I have a mediocre drink. I'm Me- happy. Have a, yeah, mediocre drink. I don't have to do anything this week. This I'm true. delighted. <laughs> so, it is February 1855. Delicious. And we are deep in the woods of Monteverne, around 20 miles outside the city of Lyon. Ah, oh, we're in France. France. It's a French oak. It's a French oak. I hope <laughs> there, there is a there is a French oak involved. Right. Okay. Good. <laughs> further, further down the line, does it have a berry? Yes, it does, and it's adorned with garlic and bicycles <laughs> and all the other contributions that the French have made to yeah, history. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> guillotines. Wow. Okay. A group of hunters Yay. are stalking through the forest, and they come across a horrifying sight: body of a young woman, naked, covered in blood. Her face and head have suffered six deep slashes Ooh. and she is clearly dead uh, her hands and feet are bruised and scratched where she's obviously tried to defend herself and mm. and flee through the forest but she has been overcome by her her attacker 
and here she lies. One of the group is sent off to alert the authorities, and the others sort of spread out to try and we'll see if they can they can find anything, see if they can yeah we'll see what see what they can find. And they come across various articles of discarded clothing. There's there's a handkerchief, there's a a black lace cap, there's a a pair of shoes. All these things sort of scattered around in the in the vicinity of the body. The, th- the authorities soon arrive and the woman's body is relocated to a nearby barn um, while they wait for the doctor to arrive to try mm-hmm. and ascertain time of death and all those sort of doctory things <laughs> the doctor is going to do some doctoring his doctor is going to do some doctoring oh dear god oh what a horrible scene no indeed indeed absolutely mm-hmm. they're out sort of hunting boar or something like that they think they come across this yeah this dead young woman now no one in the local area recognizes this woman She's not in any of the sort of the little surrounding hamlets and villages. No, no one's one, missing. No one's missing. No one who comes to, to to view the body reckon knows who this woman is. Her likeness is distributed further and further and further afield to try and get get an identification. Eventually, in Leon itself, in the city, Ooh. someone identifies her and she is given a name. A uh, Marie Bidet. Uh Now Marie had Is her name Bidet? Bidet. B a d a y. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Not <laughs> That's how the Americans say B day. They say B day. It's not that. Though. It's not that. Everyone. It's, it's, it's not. It's not that. It's not a B day. No. So this is a dead woman here. I know. She's not a toilet. Everyone. <laughs> but I am saying it. It's very important. Right. Now we've got that out of the way. So Marie, she had worked as a as a servant girl in Leon until only a week or so earlier, when she had unexpectedly quit her job. Mm-hmm. When her employer had, had asked her, why, why are you leaving? Why do you want to go? Marie replies that a man from the country um, has an offer, offered her a job. Offered her a job in a wealthy country home. The pay is too good to, 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 to pass up. The only downside was that if she was interested, she had to go now. The family were in desperate need. If she wants a job, she's got to go. So she does. She packs up her trunk and heads off to the station, daydreaming of this new and exciting life that she is she is going to lead. Oh dear, this is not a good start. Yeah, and obviously that that was not to be. The next thing anyone knows, she appears bludgeoned, oh. naked under a tree. Now, the only lead the authorities really have, no one has seen her since she left her employer in Leon. Yes, she was seen at the station. But no one has seen anyone with her. No one has saw the, the, the other side when she got off the train and she was walking mm. through the woods. No one knows. The only lead they have is this man who supposedly offered her this this job. They need to try and track this chap down. He is the one who has apparently lured her out of the city. If he's not responsible, he must be involved somehow. Yeah. They The authorities, they visit various offices and recruitment agencies in the city, deal with domestic staff, and they try and identify this man but no one is any the wiser no one has come in placing adverts for for staff wanted in mm. for any country houses or anything like that as they continue their search and their inquiries they do find out about another servant girl marie cart who has also been approached by a, a country looking man he's described as <laughs> right okay <laughs> what uh, uh, he, so he looks like he's he's not a, he's not a city city chap not a city he, chap. He's, he's a country man country mouse um, there he is um, ear of corn dead giveaway <laughs> he, he He's gone around claiming to be an agent looking for stuff for a country house. The proposition that was given to Marie Cart was the same. A fantastic opportunity, great pay, etc. But you have to start now. You have to come right with now. me now. Now, Marie, Marie Cart was not so easily swayed. Yeah, she was her. happy with her current position. Though she did tell the chap that if he is still looking for someone in a month's time, come back to Leon, track her down, and we'll talk about it again. If you're if you're still trying to find someone, okay. we'll have a chat and see what's what. And then she sort of f- forgets about it. Now the police still have no name for this man. They have a, now have a loose description that Mary Cart has has given. Say a country looking man in his fifties. He has a scar on his upper lip that sh- she noted. That that's about it. <laughs> so not much to go on really. Authorities they have no idea where to go next. They cannot track this man down. They've yeah. got no one who's who's seen Marie Bidet as she goes around. So her murder is relegated to, to the back pages of the paper and soon Ooh. is quietly forgotten about as other new exciting cases come along. But then on the 4th of March, about a month later, the same man tracks down Marie Cart again, as she has suggested. She had said, oh. in a month's time, if you're still looking, come and find me. And he does exactly that. Fair enough, right? Okay. Now, I'm assuming that the authorities hadn't revealed to Marie Carr that this man was suspected of being involved in the death 
of another young woman because while she herself decides no actually i'm honestly i'm fine i'm happy where i am she does refer him to a friend of hers um who was looking for a job at olympi alabert and assuming she wouldn't have done that if he knew he was a suspect in a murder <laughs> no i get well i guess yeah yeah she seems quite savvy though yeah Ricard. absolutely yeah, so yeah. yeah so she's obviously none the wiser about why they are looking for this man but that's it is that you know she being shifty did she give any cause that he was a bit shifty that she wasn't taking this job because it seems like a job that's too good to be true well obviously she, she but she's recommending him to a, a friend to him yeah. Um, to say, well, yeah, I don't want this job, but if you want it, go for it. Oh, yeah, you can't have that yeah. many reservations if you're trying to. Oh, be... oh I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scruples like, yeah, I don't want you bothering you. Or, yeah, but kill her. It's fine. Oh, oh, yes, perhaps she and wasn't if... a mate at all. She was a bit of <laughs> rival. That was it. Yeah, <laughs> I've not liked her for ages. So yeah. collateral damage. So I mean, it turns out the Olympia. She was delighted with the proposition, mm-hmm. with the the opportunity granted, and she leaves with the mystery man. They that very afternoon they leave Leon train station. They leave the train at Montloy and start the cross-country walk to her her new employer. Night is starting to fall as they enter the woods of, of Montevern. Uh. The same woods where Marie Bidet's body had been discovered a few weeks before. No, don't go in the woods. Yeah, no. well, some, something in the woods begins to unnerve Olympi. She is <laughs> she is, is like, this, this is weird. <laughs> yes, is, like the darkened woods with the man with the scar on his yeah, face just going, come so and follow me, child. Some, something's not just, something's not right. Yeah. <laughs> is um, there a sacrificial altar that's been laid <laughs> out? And she goes, that's a bit weird. Yeah, well, there's no house inside. They, they've now been nope, walking for a couple like of hours. Yeah. What? I mean, people then, they expect you walk long distances. Not so, a, two a, hours. Well, no, a, a big country house in the middle of nowhere somewhere. But yeah, that's why she, she starts thinking, this is, this is not normal. This is, yeah. I'm being led around the houses here or something. Like, Eight hours later, so, she went, wait a minute. So, so she decides, I've had enough. <laughs> but she's got two hours to walk back. I'm not doing that. She turns and she runs. She just absolutely, she legs it. She abandons her trunk and she just fucks off Jesus. out of there. Get get out of there. And she flees towards the lights of a, of a distant building. Okay. So it's not, it's not the house they're aiming for it's quite well, a she quite a, it's a little farm something. building a little cottage or something girl like sees, that see something. but she sees habitation Make a break somewhere and she she legs it and she is able to find sanctuary does she shout sanctuary she does she's as she, yeah, she's running towards the sanctuary, cottage sanctuary, sanctuary! <laughs> <laughs> they're like not again <laughs> now uh, olympia she goes to the police about her frightening encounter there's this weird man offering jobs and then taking them then to the woods taking girls to the to the woods but she's not actually been attacked say the police well did actually anything actually happen no did he try and did he attempt anything no he but he was just really weird and creepy but did he try anything no so the authorities actually get more pissed off with her than they do with this this man who is supposedly trying to lead her astray into the fuck knows where. And they say, well, you, you have broken your promise to work in this fancy house. There is now probably a grand family out there who are desperate without a maid without a servant you've left them in the lurch yeah yeah magical family that doesn't yeah. exist in this so, house in the woods that's just because you got a bit jumpy in the dark uh, get out victim they baby. say yeah. so they obviously they do they do nothing about any of that but then in september a man answering the same description persuades another young woman um josephette chartley to accompany him and take up again this mystery job as before, the pair leave the city, and as they walk and they walk and they walk and they walk, night draws in. Josephette, like Olympia, goes, "Nah, balls to this. Yeah. <laughs> I am not having this." And she runs as well. She she abandons her trunk and she legs it again to another little hamlet that she sees <laughs> in the distance. I, I must say at this point that it it's very tense. It feels very frightening. I'm also going to say he's he's shit at what he's doing. Maybe he's had he's clearly had success <laughs> once, but all these women he's like, God damn, they're running away! They're running oh, away! <laughs> shit! Why do I keep walking them past this lovely cozy farm that they <laughs> run into? All these women are getting into the woods after two hours, going nope, and then running. And can he not run? Well, apparently, well, it, 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 no one says that they hear him chase or anything like that. Perhaps he's after their, their trunks. Oh, maybe they, they he's aban- a, th- oh, a thief. Okay, a thief. They, so they, he's he's it's after a big their con, abandoned. For that. Yeah, it, it seems like a lot of effort. A to lot try of effort to rob steal someone. Some, uh, steal a servant's 
clothes. Yeah, which would be nothing. Which is not going to be anything great yeah. and fancy. But these two women have managed to run away. I'm glad. I'm very, yeah. very pleased that they got away. But also, Absolutely. it's a... It's a bit weird. It's just weird. Okay, it's all right. It's weird. Yeah. No, oh, we'll tell me more. I, I demand more Well, story. no, nothing happens. Now, now nothing happens. Oh. Nothing happens for the next six years, apparently. Six years? The woods of Monteverne seem to be quiet. No screaming, no running, nothing oh. is happening in the woods. Uh, they think, well, perhaps this, has this unknown mystery man, has he moved on elsewhere? Has Another he gone somewhere wood. else? <laughs> or has he got a lot more successful, maybe? Oh, shit. Don't say that. Don't say that. We don't know. Oh, God, has he been luring girls? Then late at night, the 26th of May, 1861, so we're now six years later, mm -hmm. there is a wild banging on the door of a farm in the small village of Balan, one of the, the, the several hamlets that dot the area. When this wary farmer opens the door, he is confronted by a terrified woman begging for help. Her, her clothes are ripped and torn. She has no shoes. Her hands and feet are bruised and scratched Ooh. from running and stumbling through the forest. Now, also, the farmer takes her in straight away and bars the door and summons the police from Montoy to hear the woman's story. Her name is Marie Pichon, and she tells the officers about how earlier that day she had been going about her business in Lyon when she had been approached by a man near the servant's office, in the, near the recruitment office for mm. domestic staff. The man casually struck up a conversation asking if she was looking for for employment. And she replies, yes, yes, she's, she's in the market for a new job. He says, I've got exactly the right thing for you. He, tell, he tells her that he was a gardener at a chateau near Montreuil. And then the mistress of the house has sent him in the city to find a new maid. He goes on to say, well, the work is easy and the pay is great. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's almost too good to be true, It's almost too good to be pretty. true. He says the old woman, she always has guests staying who tip the staff really well. It's an easy gig if you can get it. The only downside is she needs someone now. Today. She needs someone today. We what a we coincidence. Now, Marie, she's ent entirely taken in by this this chap. She reports his, his appearance, his language, his manner are all beyond reproach. He, there was nothing about him that suggested something dodgy. He looked entirely respectable. He spoke well. They always uh, He looked do. well. He was dressed well. Again, and, I mean, most people probably wouldn't yeah. have gone with someone who was rubbing their hands together with glee <laughs> with one giant monocle and a big top hat and a knife. Yeah. And she accepts on the spot. She spends that afternoon sort of putting her affairs in orders and, and such like, and then she... Well, that sounds slightly, slightly fine. This is quite grand. Slightly, slightly, slightly final. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> Goes back going, yes, Miss Temple, take a letter. I'm not your secretary. I don't know who you are. But packing her trunk. Packing, putting your affairs in order. I'm never going on holiday with you again. <laughs> Put your affairs in order <laughs> before we leave. Shit. <laughs> Do you have a will? <laughs> and the fact that you made me bring a trunk as well. <laughs> she meets up with the, the chap again at the train station. Mm -hmm. And they board the train for Montloy arriving about 7.30 that evening. Now, the chap explains that the house is about an hour and a half walk from the train station, but it's not a difficult journey. He carries Marie's trunk mm -hmm. while she has a, a small little bag and her umbrella, and, and off they go. They walk for some time along the road, but then suddenly the man veers off and starts going uh, across country through some little paths and things that are not entirely through a forest, but there's a little country path that's been traveled okay, through yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. he takes a diversion he calls out that it is much much quicker to cut across than follow the road round half the time to get there's so, oh, okay fine she thinks follows away as they approach sort of every clearing or every bend in the path the man assures her that the house is going to come into sight any minute the house, just just around this corner you'll see the house that's where we're going yeah, of course it never does marie says that throughout all of this the man has been friendly he's been chatting away he's been helping her across difficult if there's a bit of difficult terrain or something mm. he's helping her across the perfect he's gentleman mindful of her progress yeah exactly the perfect gentleman that is until they reach the crest of a small hill now from this vantage point marie can see for quite some distance in all directions and there is no big house anywhere to be seen there is no chateau on the horizon so she goes okay what's going on here <laughs> <laughs> <She's>... <laughs> tries to make conversation with this man asking how much further there are 
Now all she gets uh, are grunts and mumblings in response. Oh, no, no conversation anymore. She says as he walks on, he seems to, to linger, picking up a rock, judging it in his hand, Christ. and then tossing it away sort of thing. More, but maybe picking up a branch. I don't want that stick. Maybe so it, he just can't <laughs> it. Because I've got a cannon. And it's like, no, I don't want no, that. No, that's a bit much. <laughs> a tiger. Yeah. Mm. Now, Marie actually asks, has, has he dropped something? N- noticing the how... <laughs> how he's interested and carefully he is searching the ground no 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 he says he no, thought he says he, he thought he saw a plant for his garden a rare plant for his garden but no 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 it's all it's all good okay now maria's mm. starting to get seriously freaked out now she she thinks of running she thinks of just fuck it i'm gonna leg it and then take my chances but she's convinced that she is gonna get chased down by this this big this big yeah fit man is gonna is he's gonna overtake her is gonna overpower her if she if she runs so she yeah. she decides against that i'm also only thinking at this point of the practicality they've got a trunk yeah he's still he's still carrying he's carrying a big he's old still carrying mm, trunk. this trunk well you say that until oh until as they again they go around another corner and he announces that this trunk is getting too heavy this this trunk is now getting too heavy he's gonna leave it here He's going he's gonna to leave it here in a thicket. He'll come back. <laughs> the, the next morning, he'll come back with a cart yeah. and pick it up. It's not going to rain. The stuff will be fine, but we'll make much, much faster progress if, if I don't have to carry this trunk. And Maria's <laughs> right. like, okay, fine. She doesn't really have much choice <laughs> in the matter. And again, still off they go. He's picking up stones and <laughs> dis- discarding things, and there is still no house in sight. Eventually, she spots a little lone cottage on the horizon yeah. in the distance and what seems to be a road going past it's a very tumble down rickety old thing but she thinks well god perhaps there's someone someone there and summoning up all her courage she stands her ground and she says i see you have led me wrong i shall stop here okay and she confronts this chap now as soon as the words are out of them her mouth the man he pulls a thick cord from his pocket oh. and he lunges at her with this with this rope. Oh. Now Marie stumbles back and she is able to avoid his his grasping arms by grabbing him and actually pushing him away physically. Yeah, good for she, you. Yeah, using all her strength. Now the the man obviously is surprised that someone's actually fighting fighting back. What's going <laughs> on there? He sort of stumbles, slightly taken aback, and she's able to use that opportunity to to leg it to, run, to just run, run um she drops her umbrella and her little bag that she's carrying her shoes come off her her hat gets dislodged and, mm. but she's just legging it yeah. as well, as you would she dare not stop to retrieve anything in case he catches up no, with that's her it. Just, go for just, it. just go for it absolutely just she, for she, it. she does she does not look back what she later would say is that she didn't think that he was giving chase she didn't stop it up but she didn't hear him mm. coming closer she didn't hear any crashing through branches and all this sort of stuff so did he just go all oh, right she's gone <laughs> oh, lost one <laughs> lost like one hunter yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah sort of thing no chance of catching them but as she's running the the moon rises above some trees and she sees a little white painted farmhouse with with some smoke coming out of the chimneys hey. there we go there's somewhere that, that i can oh, get to <laughs> and she legs it across the field and she bangs on the door and the farmer lets her in there is no sign of the attacker in pursuit or anything like that. Just this terrified woman at the door. Now, this story is obviously far too much for the authorities to ignore. This is not just a man being creepy in the forest. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this, this, which would be enough. Which so, would be enough. Which we, we, we wasn't at the time en- no, enough. No, no, yes. Um, it was the style at the time. Men were going the time. to be creepy and try and um, have sex with you in the but, forest. But now this, this, this is assault. This is potentially attempted murder. This, yeah. is, this is something that you can't really ignore. So they Are go, you sure you weren't leading the rope on? Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And also now they have a witness. They have someone who I can yeah. identify this man so i think okay right we're going to to take this seriously (laughs) now gossip amongst the villagers of course this goes wild through all the little hamlets that there are around there and all the gossip all the rumors they point in one direction to one man who fits the bill an antisocial miserly old man lives with his wife out in the middle of nowhere no one likes him martin dumoulard now I'm a bit parched. I think it's time should for a drink. Should we have another drink? I think we should. Yes. 
Well, Nick. Yes. We have Ooh. a man. We have a name. We have a name. A name for this brute, this monster of the woods. Indeed. <gasps> so Martin Dumoulard. Dumoulard. Now magistrates decide that he seems a good a place as any to start. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> might, might, as well, might as well start with him. So they go and ask him a few questions. The first thing they ask him is, well, where were you on the day of the 26th? And he refused to answer. Not a good sign, mate. Not, 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 a, not a good start. He refuses to answer. And they ask him more questions, but any answers he gives, they're evasive. They're sometimes they're contradictory. Oh, what he what dear. he says, and people are going, "Nah, something ain't right here." <laughs> Either you're just really stupid, or you're Possibly. you're just trying to you're trying to hide something. You're trying to confuse things. Where were you this night? I don't know. Yes, I don't know. I don't have to tell you that at all. Mm. Also, I was dead. But I got better. Yeah, I got better. <laughs> so he is not able to give a satisfactory account of his whereabouts. And it is enough for magistrates to go, no, okay, you're coming with us. You're coming in for more questioning. And they do exactly that. They take him in. They take him into to Montoy. And as soon as he arrives at the, the police station, Marie Pichon identifies him. He is the man who offered me this job, who led me on this merry dance through the wood, who tried to murder me, who tried mm. to kill me. This is this is him. Now, meanwhile, the authorities are back at Martin Dumoulin's house. So they're searching, trying to find evidence, trying to find anything they can. And they uncover a huge stash of women's clothing. Oh, God. There's linens, there's bits of lace, gowns, handkerchiefs, shoes, hats, everything in the style that a domestic servant would have had. Ew. Many of the items have bloodstains. <laughs> that apparently someone has tried to wash out with varying degrees of success. Oh, no. What's the wife got to do with this as mm. well? Oh, dear. In total, they find over 1,250 items of clothing sweet s- jesus sashed around the house okay but that doesn't mean that's a whole 1200 and different no no no, no so this could be could, uh, there's from, a, a, from a person you know yeah, you so, have several so if you're looking at trunks what all your worldly belongings right. or something oh, yeah, the in, in, a, in a trunk you may you may be have 30 40 i don't know pieces or something in that so yes we're not talking 1250 women (laughs) (laughs) it's like shit (laughs) you did do well in those six years yeah but but enough to gather this collection but to have that all over the house i guess he's got a remote house middle of nowhere all his trophies it's it's there (gasps) but then 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 then, apparently then they're not sort of displayed well not that you would display them as trophies but they're just like in drawers and in cupboards and sort of stacked up sort of thing as so who knows? Now, after the discovery of these clothes um, in the house, the authorities, yeah, they start to question Martin's wife, Marianne. Now, she must have known what her husband is up to <laughs> or why the hell he is bringing back all these clothes <laughs> Here we and are, where, where all this stuff is coming from. Now, Marianne, she is quite happy to talk. Apparently, oh, apparently there is no love loss between Martin and Marianne. There's bitter and angry at each other as they are with everyone else in the world, it would seem. Oh, brilliant. Um, so oh, good. Two hateful people forced <laughs> together, um, <laughs> just <laughs> hating each other and everyone. Oh, gr- oh, we so rarely get that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was, I thought you were going to say the wife is seen as some sort of simple, oh, no, I no, have no idea. No, absolutely not. She's went, oh, I'm just cracking her knuckles. Yeah. I have been waiting for the day, <laughs> so, yeah. lads. So she quite happily tells of how her husband often brings home bloodstained clothing for her to wash <laughs> so she, she'll she'll scrub away and if the clothes are nice enough yeah i might keep some stuff if it's nice <laughs> it won't make it into my wardrobe if it's if it's nice oh he's... if it's a bit past it then oh it goes into his pile of stuff that he's oh, got over there shit so he's just coming in going all right love i've got a lot of shit here yeah. um if you wash it and you like it you can have it you can crack, if yeah. not can you add it to my pile of weirdness yeah pretty pretty much okay yeah and so it's and practical she, it's practical she she goes she just goes with it really um <laughs> on one occasion she she quite happily tells the authorities her husband came home with a bloody gown like you do of an evening um and he tells his wife that he's just killed a girl in the woods Shit. just killed someone in the woods and then he picks up his shovel and now he's going back to bury her wow and she's just there yeah right fine scrub 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 
Yes. <laughs> this will look nicely. Um, My God, um, yeah, I guess. The, yeah, the, the, yeah. The next day he says, well, we left her trunk, this woman's trunk, this girl's trunk, at the train station. So I'm going to go back and pick up the trunk. More clothes. Hey. More clothes. <laughs> and she actually advised him against it. So no, don't mm, go. Be it's, it's, for it. Yeah, it's gonna ask people ask questions. Mm. So it's, it's just left as left luggage, and it's, oh. it, and it's discovered later. And she's oh, I told him not to bother with that. In my head, it was like he was taking their clothes and putting them on, putting them on, and there, dancing there around. Is, there is no, there's no record of anything of no, that. No, because I feel like the wife would have said yeah, immediately exactly, if yeah. that had happened. Yeah. But it was all just like, oh, here you go. Here's some shit that you can use. There's he's he's not trying to sell it, so it's not. The theft, theft for, for make, getting money or anything like that. He's not trying to sell this stuff, or it's just piling up around the house in like a hoardy sort of yeah. weird way. It's a weird part of the brain that yeah. goes, "Oh, this will be useful. I don't have to buy her. She doesn't have to spend money on clothes." Well, anymore. yes, that's true. She's yeah. she's she's able to and if not, pick and we'll, choose what she wants, and we'll just keep it around. We can patch up the curtains with <laughs> these bloodstained <laughs> clothes. Oh, God, this is oh, this is Brothers Grim territory. Yeah. Of just whoa. All right. <laughs> so I mean, I thought the authorities are amazed that she is confessing so readily and giving up her husband like this that they actually decide to test this confession to say are you actually yeah. are you just bullshitting with us here because, um, because our job has never been easy <laughs> yeah exactly you've just given us everything we wanted um are you actually telling the truth also this police force can fuck off quite frankly <laughs> because people come in and get help i've been abducted and nearly yeah. raped in the forest well, well were you though were you? this man has been killing everyone and i have the evidence right here well is it really <laughs> evidence though are you sure are you sure you're telling the truth these guys hated paperwork <laughs> On the 31st of July that year, they actually take Martin and Marianne um, into the woods. And under Marianne's cajoling, Martin eventually, not quite unhurriedly, leads them to a spot beneath a grand oak tree and points to the ground. The oh, place... an oak tree! Hey! 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 A lone oak tree! Oh, no. Is it in the forest? Is it's it, it's in the forest, probably not that lone. It's there, it's uh, haunted. It's, it's now definitely haunted. <laughs> Um, the police go in with shovels and they're just below the surface. They discover the skeletal remains of a woman. So Marianne has obviously been telling the truth. This woman has never been identified. Now, Martian, he either refused to give up her name or he did not know her name. Yeah. We do not know. As the investigations continue, now news of these discoveries and these crimes get more and more widespread. And more and more witnesses and victims and potential victims come forward. Women like um, Olympia Alibert and Josephette uh, Shartley from earlier, they actually go, that was us. We That was the bastard who who tried to come after us. And they go to the authorities again and say, he was the one who did this to us. Connections are made to the previously unsolved murder of Marie Bidet. Six mm. years earlier, they realise this is all connected. This is all the same thing. Family members of missing women, other potential victims, queue day and night to find out if their loved ones had fallen foul of the Dumoulards. Now, eventually, authorities narrow down their lists to 11 victims that we can prove. Yeah. Three of whom have been murdered. Three of whom right. have been killed. 11 victims who have been attempted. Right. So we know about Marie Bidet, whose body had been discovered in 1855. She seems to be the first that they can positively identify yeah. as one of Martin's victims. This is followed by Olympe Halibert and Josephette Chartley. We know about them from earlier. We have Jean-Marie Bourgeois, Victorine Pellin and Louise Michel. Um, now, these are women who all fell for exactly the same promise of a good job in a fancy house in the middle of nowhere, but sense something was wrong, knew something was awry as they traipsed through this forest and they they fled. They abandoned their trunks, they abandoned everything they had <laughs> and they legged it. So this, again, made increase his stash of clothing but they they survived they got all they got away at the time the women didn't report anything to the police 
probably thinking, what the fuck's the point? Well, I've lost all my st- Well, <laughs> um, I, I, I guess. But like, now they, they, they come forward reading about these cases. They come forward and going, right, no, we were victims of this too. Then comes Unidentified Woman, revealed by uh, Marianne mm. de Millard, murdered by Martin, probably in, the, in late 1856, they think. Again, we do not know her name. But we assume the ruse was much the same. So um, a woman who was looking for a better life out into the forest. Lord into the woods. Lord into the woods. And Martin had his way and, and killed her, Ooh. buried her beneath the tree. When she was she was uncovered, there was the suspicion that she had actually been buried alive. Yeah. What? That either, well, either that he had um, sort of knocked her unconscious and perhaps believed that she was dead, then buried her. Yeah. But then when the doctor examined her later, when her remains were found... So that she might suffer. That she she had she had suffocated. So actually, she Jesus. hadn't been she hadn't been dead, but she had she'd actually been buried alive. Yeah. But it had been a long time since she was buried. So I'm not sure so that, whether you could determine whether you could have determine that at uh, that distance apart. So some so some reports say she had been buried alive. Some don't really. Maybe mention that might it. be a bit of hyperbole. Might be a bit later, making it a bit more dramatic. Next we have um, Julie Farge, who was approached by Martin again in Lyon in 1859. She is offered the same well well paid job in a respectable house. This time Martin had attacked her and tried to rip away some of her clothing. But Julie had screamed so loudly and for so long that actually men from a nearby village Yay. came running into the forest to investigate. And Martin had fled. Ooh. Martin had actually legged it. Now, Julie, she was taken to the authorities. So you need to report this. You yeah. you need to report this and this man to, and give your statement. But it turns out that the identity papers that she was using they were stolen. No. So oh. no one believed a word what, that she was saying. Oh, Jesus. She was actually charged with theft and vagrancy. Jesus Christ. For trying to go and report this, this Someone crime. Someone has attacked me. Someone's attacked me. Someone has tried to kill me. I Someone has witnesses. tried to rape me. These, these two men rescued me and saved me, but you, you've stolen your ID papers. Therefore, we're actually going to charge you with theft and vagrancy. Right. And okay. forget about everything that you've been through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to say it, police force, the greatest poison of them all. Mm. Another victim is known only as the Unknown of St. Croix. It's a really? very good name. Unknown of St. Croix. The Unknown of St. Croix. In December 1859, a miller from the village of St. Croix witnesses an attack on a woman. The miller, Jean-Pierre Cheritin, is walking home when he passes a woman walking accompanied by a man. The man is carrying a large package with him. Not too much later, the woman comes running up to him, explaining that the man has hit her with, mm. with a branch, stolen her her package, it contained everything she owned, um, and then and run off with, yeah. with everything she has. The, the the miller, he tries to pursue this chap, but he is he is long, long gone. He allows the woman to stay at his at his home that evening before the next morning she returns to Leon and she is never heard of again. When Jean Pierre he reads of Dumoulard in the in the papers and things like that, he recognizes this man. This is the man who he had seen walking with this woman all those years ago. He must have been the one responsible yeah. for this. And he goes to the authorities and he positively identifies. Yes, that is the man yeah. who was responsible. But no one knows who the woman was. No, for, of course, he, yeah, he, he, yeah. he didn't. For whatever reason, he didn't get a name or anything like that. But or he's she still would, a witness. Would, but he no, exactly. He's a so witness, he, yeah. he was he was a witness in the case. Fair enough. But but we do not know who the woman was. No, who had, who had been attacked, terrified, um, and then yeah. running away. Yeah. So yeah, he was a witness, absolutely, in the trial. Yeah. But yeah, so she is only ever known um, as the unknown of Saint Croix. Um, this, <laughs> this 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 woman. The third confirmed murder, the third confirmed death that Martin was attributed with, was Marie Eloise Bussard. Now, after Martin's arrest, three women went to visit authorities about the disappearance of their sister. Mm. Um, Marie and Louis. Now Marie had gone missing earlier that year in Lyon. No one had heard from her for several months. The last thing they knew was that she had been offered a good job in the country and that she had to go straight away. Mm. Now obviously this now rang alarm bells with the yeah. authorities. If this woman had managed to escape like some of the others, then where was she? Why don't her sisters know where she is? Why where where yeah, yeah why hasn't she turned up? Or had she in fact become another a victim? of martin's the police arranged for women to look through the clothing that had been discovered in martin's home and yet amongst the pieces they find several that they identified as that belonged to my sister oh, those Jesus. are those are her her pieces the police again go out into the woods 
if he's buried her anywhere, it's in these woods. This seems to be his stomping ground. Stomping yeah, ground, yeah, exactly. Site, yeah. To try and find the remains of Mary Eloise. Martin Dumoulin, he is dragged along on this expedition. And after a few hours of them poking around the authorities, mainly because Martin seems to be getting bored by this, <laughs> by this point, he turns and says that he will take them to her body. Just this, just this is get it over and done with. Okay. And again, he directs them to a spot under a tree. Whether this one's an oak or not, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it's under a tree. And yet there they find the body of Marie Bassad. Now, the trial starts on the 29th of January, 1862. Now, in front of a crowd of 5,000 people <laughs> who have assembled to watch Martin and his wife and Marianne on trial. Yeah. On the first day alone, 71 witnesses are scheduled to appear. Oh, my God. It's a busy old, busy old day. It's a busy day. <laughs> it's a busy Rattle day. It's the first them, day. They really are rattling through them. Yeah, exactly. The next two days are devoted to the hundreds of personal items yeah. that, have, that have been found. And again, more witnesses who say, that was my sisters, that was my, mm. that was my daughters, this was my friends who have all gone missing. After 30 minutes of deliberation, Martin and Marianne are both found guilty. Both yeah. found guilty of everything arrayed against them. Martin is sentenced to death and Marianne to 20 years of hard labour. Mm-hmm. Now, Marianne, she is held in Uberver prison until she dies. She dies 13 years later, still incarcerated in 1875. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't see the outside again. Martin Dumoulin is sentenced to be executed by guillotine. And on the 7th of March his execution is carried out now following that his head is sent to leon to the medical school mm-hmm. to be studied right so we need to get in the business to try and ascertain what has created such a monster yes yeah, so the, what the is there what the is there about the brain psychopath. about the brain about the skull <laughs> that, that has caused such horrendous things to be done is it a bit of phrenology a bit of phrenology Yay. going on there Love um, it. until they realize no we don't know <laughs> we can't we can't <laughs> tell from from the skull what's there were no on, big bumps but we'll give it a damn bit. good go <laughs> Some people say they were convicted of three murders. Some people put potential victim count into the 20s and 30s. That may be slightly fanciful. Other people are, think, under 10. But three, which is is bad enough. (laughs) This Um, is a lot. But three, they were convicted for and a number of thefts and attempted murders. But you also have eight witnesses who who ran away at that trial. So you've got at least eight women who escaped. Who escaped, yeah, exactly. And these are the ones who are testifying. Precisely, yeah. So they've they've identified these 11 women. So um, it makes you think. Three of whom are are dead, eight of whom are alive and who have escaped by their own wits. These are the official ones. (laughs) Exactly. How many more are there that were never identified, (laughs) that were never found? We don't know. And that is the story of Martin and Marianne Dumoulin. Some say France's first serial killers. Da, da, da. They weren't. They weren't. <laughs> oh, that's a great story. It's that's a good story. one where you go, how have we not heard this story well, before? It's one that I must admit, it's one that I've been, I've, it's been on my radar for some time. Yeah. And I thought, I'm, and I've never been able to find enough to think oh, I can do a full episode on this one. Really? And then... Only recently, I found another website. Was like, oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you have to wait for the yep. resources so to like, come ah, to you. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> oh my god, that's a great story. Mm. That's really chilling. That's a, a genuinely creepy story. Yeah. I mean, we haven't had the bastardometer out in a while. No, but I think I think we should get it out again. <laughs> dust it, dust it off. For dust this it chap. off. <laughs> for Here this is the chap. bastardometer, and also the police are on the bastardometer. <laughs> Right there. They've not done well by themselves. It's a crazy crime. It's so rare that we have a full on. I, I want to keep going back to Hansel and Gretel and kind it of in the very, woods. Yeah, absolutely. But it's also very gothic as well. Yeah. I've been reading a lot of gothic books, obviously, <laughs> right now. Yeah, luring into the woods and yeah. these women. I, I'm going to ask the question. It's not a very nice one. Were they sexually assaulted? They're, they're on one Motivated. of them. The, yeah, on on the first victim of Marie Bourdais, they they think there was a sexual assault there. Mm. On the two other the, the other victims, they it was too far gone they to couldn't, determine they couldn't identify, such yeah, such yeah. things. But it is it is more than likely that yes, that was a component of it. Because I was wondering whether it's theft or whether it's just compulsion, but it's whatever's happening. It's such a strange setup, and it obviously is... worked well for him. Well, yeah, but it, it is bizarre as you say because 
if the, if the if the goal was theft, then why not sell the stuff mm. and make some money? Why just have it stored around your house? No. Um, if your goal was to to rape and to and to kill women, then why let so many of them get away? with relative ease and not even go and yeah. chase after them or anything like that what was the motivation that's the thing is, is really gives weird you pause, isn't yeah it? it's, it's really peculiar you would think that he would have run after them you think he would have chased them is it a hunter but then it's like you would think with a hunter he would chase after them and he's just going and he seems to be going oh she's run i'll get the next one some some trappers and some hunters are going oh no it's gone it's gone there's yeah. no chance of getting them i'll wait for the next, wait for the next one. one i've got her shine i've got the, i've got some stuff I've got her trunk That's so weird. with some things. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait for the next one. Is it some sort of practicality? Is that the, if I have them, if I've caught them, I'll take what I can from them. And unfortunately for those girls, that was everything. But the other ones ran away. Go, oh, no, I've got a trunk full of stuff. Yeah. And clearly he was taking it back to the wife. Yeah, and the, the wife, wife was going, oh, yeah, I like that frock. I'll yeah, have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll iron this up yeah. and everything. Put this on. Try la, and la, scrub la, the blood la, out la. of that and I'll have that. But we can make use of this. It's so it's weird. weird. It's, it's it's almost weird. like a survivalist kind of mentality. It does have, yeah, it does have that sort of like in the middle of the Arctic sort of or yeah, yeah sort of yeah, wilderness of Alaska or something like that. It's just sort of where you're it's... afraid if you met that kind of crazy in inverted commas <laughs> mountain man yeah. or yeah, I'm I'm a hunter and will skin you but as well a, but as this eating is obviously you. Obviously, someone who could come across as entirely respectable, absolutely, and could speak well and dress well to gain the confidence of these women in the first place so he wasn't just some sort of like feral well, mountain yeah. yeah forest man <laughs> um living in a tree he was obviously yeah he he came across he could speak well he was persuasive and charismatic and it was two completely split lives it two seems. completely different people if the girls are to be believed in that yeah. way and, excuse and that seems like a horrible thing to say because absolutely we believe them but the story of them being charming and lovely and very sophisticated and walking along you know maybe they weren't maybe an opportunity was presented to them they were like oh okay fair enough and it was later on going no, no i completely trusted them and it was just someone who could speak good <laughs> And then lured them into the forest and they felt foolish. Because you might feel like a fool afterwards. It's absolutely not their fault. It's just this... He just seems crazy that he mm. lives in this shack in the woods with his... Well, apparently, with his <laughs> wife. And I think just, it's probably more than a shack. Well, no, no, not a shack. But it's a, okay, it's a <laughs> house it's, in the it's, woods. Yeah, it's a little cottage in the woods it's somewhere. A, okay, okay uh, well, sorry, he's upgraded from a shack to a cottage. <laughs> I'm not saying he was living in one room, but they had a cottage in the woods. It wasn't an estate or a no, palace. No, indeed not. No, absolutely. Alone out there to do whatever they needed yeah. to do. But yeah, coming into the city, presenting himself as a gentleman... Mm. And luring these girls in. And it's a cunning ruse to say, uh, amazing job opportunity, but come right now. Yeah. Because then you've got no chance of telling your family, yeah, sending a absolutely. telegraph or anything like that. This is what we need. Yeah. Oh, that's so chilling. Yeah, it's it's really horrible. interesting. It's a really interesting oh, one. Oh, God. It's, it's as you said, though. How many other people were yeah. there? Yeah. How many others were there? How many other girls? Don't know about? Who were all servants. Yeah. No one was looking for them. No one knew. And clearly the authorities were like, oh, well, never mind. Yeah. They were like, you're lying. This seems like paperwork. And anyone who came up and said, my daughter or my sister or anyone has been missing. They're like, oh, well, they're probably dead. They're probably, yeah, they're, oh, they're fine. They're somewhere else. Yeah, they've, they've, probably mo- they've sh- moved on. They shouldn't have wandered off um, into the woods. Yeah. Like. I, and I can't get over him carrying the trunk. I'm sorry. Because yeah. he wanted the stuff. Well, he wanted the stuff, yeah. He wanted the stuff. It's weird. <laughs> I, oh, the whole thing is it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> it's so weird. It's brilliant. What do you think? Think people, what do you think of the story of Martin Dumoulard? Dumoulard and his wife Marianne. Marianne, who who hated him apparently, yeah. was looking for an excuse to turn him in. But yeah, apparently so, yeah. No one came a knocking until the police go. Oh yeah, he's done <laughs> like, everything. Yeah, he's in, just take him away. What do you think of the story, the case? Do you know of it? What do you think really happened there? What do you think was the motivation? Do you think there were more murders? Do you think it was just a man who was really motivated by theft? and the girls were just an added bonus so in the way. maybe mm-hmm. there were no others did he have a big break uh, probably unlikely uh, what do we think of the wife it's rare that we get a wife who just <laughs> sells their partner down the river absolutely it was him I took all their clothes there we are I'm knitting please don't bother me anymore and it's nice that there was a lot of good neighbours as well yep, that's absolutely. always the horror film that you run yep. to the farmhouse and then the farmhouse no. is populated by cannibals no the, the neighbours were good they're they all came, good they people. came to the rescue 
when they needed to. So good for them. Tell us what you think. Jump on the comments of this episode wherever you listen to it. Talk to us on social media. Share your thoughts, your theories and your feelings with other listeners and with us. Send us more suggestions of stories, of course, in the future if this one has inspired you. But, you know, you could... (laughs) You could mix up a lone oak. Yeah, you could. I don't know. Don't bother. Just well, don't bother. We drank it. Well, only because we added the honey. We added a lot of honey. Yeah. And so, that made it drinkable. It just was disappointing. It wasn't worth no, it. No, it was not worth it. So don't waste your pistachio on that or your whiskey or your lemons. So make <laughs> up something lovely. Just let us know what you're drinking. Because the lone oak was such a disappointment, we need you to send us all the drinks that you're drinking yep. this weekend. Quite right. Alcoholic or non-alcoholic, we don't mind being tempted by what's, something. What's, what's that? I know, I just, I, I can't finish that sentence. What's, what's, just, what's, you know, what's, we what's, could have an alcoholic drink. What's, what's, what's <laughs> going on there? No, no. <laughs> no, just send us pictures of that or some cheese. Ge- oh, oh, cheese. Like Ooh, snacks. snacks. Send us more pictures of snacks, actually. Mm, like Get snacks. the snack game going on. If you haven't already, please come and join us on Patreon and please leave us a review on Apple iTunes to all of our new listeners. If you love what you hear, leaving us a review really 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 makes a difference to us and we really genuinely appreciate us and of course follow us on social media if you haven't on instagram and on tiktok and on facebook join our book club do all the things all the there's a lot of things to be done there thanks for listening guys we have been the people inside the poisoner's cabinet we will see you next week and remember your loved ones are trying to kill you